The real question here is, what would be our activation phrase? Leave a comment, I'm genuinely curious about this. Hey guys, X here. Now, a while back, when we first started doing our weekly What If Roundtable live streams, where you, the audience, get to suppose your own What If ideas in real time in front of myself, Havrock, and sometimes Sophie B, as well as supporting the channel in these days of uncertainty in general, an idea came up about the idea whether Bulma becoming a member of the Dragon Team in terms of a frontline member would be viable or not. Now, this immediately fired me up in terms of ideas, and I remembered making some notes about this a long time ago, and now I had the ideas to make it happen. And you guys seem to like the first part. Don Comics over on Twitter had asked me months ago a similar question, but in a manner that would have had Bulma focus solely on martial arts, like every other Dragon Team member going out there. And while that would be awesome to see, I felt that if Toriyama decided to go down that route, and make Bulma strong, physically that is, she wouldn't go full on beefcake. She would add her own spin on proceedings to make it seem believable for her character, but nevertheless, she would take ideas from her friends who did train all the time, you know, like Goku, Yamcha, etc. So it's time to return to the question. What if Bulma trained like Goku and basically became Iron Man slash rescue? In short, Bulma would immediately become the Iron Man slash rescue of the Dragon World because there are a lot of parallels between her and Tony Stark. They both have a family that is linked to a massive powerhouse of engineering and business, of course. They have a very strong intelligence. They are incredibly smart when it comes to engineering itself, as well as the ability to look good in front of the camera, of course, and have oodles of charisma to boot. Dr. Bulma's tenacity and drive to build stuff and make new inventions is very impressive. Whilst at the same time, she does have a very selfish personality, especially in the early days, which is played up massively in her teens, but is eventually tempered when she becomes a mother and in the later stages of her life, especially in the Dragon Ball Super Arcs, thankfully. Character growth, you see. Now, in the last part, Bulma had observed her friend Goku and her current boyfriend Yamcha fight off the likes of Pilaf and are now taking part in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament. She has witnessed the power and the strength of the people who took part, and she wanted to do that too in this change of mood from the original timeline. From there, she got Yamcha and then later Goku to teach her the basics of martial arts and strength training, which culminated in her being able to wear incredibly heavy, but also incredibly powerful armor of her own design, thanks to the conquering of the Red Ribbon Army, Capsule Corp's major rival in those days, especially in the engineering sector. Now, with no competitors going, yeah, there's nobody that could challenge Capsule Corp now with Red Ribbon Army gone, the Breach Sled Company had way more money to plow into follies such as Bulma's armor. But now with King Piccolo raining down upon them, this might become less of a folly and more of a genius move, especially in terms of robotics. Now, with King Piccolo still besting the likes of Chiaotzu and Roshi, falling earlier when he was trying to use the Mothaba technique, the demon is able to realize his wish and wishes on the dragon to make him young again, as well, of course, destroying Shenron itself at the same time. Bulma tried her best to deflect the mouth energy away from striking Shenron by jumping in the air and resisting it for a while, but her suit was overloading massively, and if she persisted, the armor would have failed, and she herself would have been vaporized, burnt to a crisp, whatever you want to say. This was a fight she couldn't win. With Goku off on his own arc with Yajirobe in the Ultra Divine Water, Bulma has to do her best with a demoralized Tenshinhan as the two strongest challenges remaining going against King Piccolo's reign. They both try their best to master the Mafaba, but Bulma's suit is still unable to process Ki efficiently, and so she just takes to simply recording Tenshinhan's efforts so she can maybe perfect this later on. That is, if they get out of this in one piece, which isn't certain right now in this story. However, this is cut short when it turns out that in Piccolo's lottery, West City is the first major region to be targeted by him and his forces. Bomber and Tenshinhan rush to King Castle to take on Drum, the largest of King Piccolo's children. Now, this is where things get pretty interesting. 
With Bulma assisting Ten Shin Han, she is determined to take on Drum, who is about to threaten West City's very existence. Her suit is not as strong as Drum, but she has more training and the will to push through. She expends her suit to maximum output like she did with the Mouth Energy Wave, and with that, she can just about compare to Drum. With Bulma and Drum going at it, Ten Shin Han uses this as a chance to use the Mafaba on King Piccolo. Which works! Piccolo is trapped inside the electric rice cooker, and Drum is mortified to see his father being imprisoned once more. Now, if you're wondering how this actually would make sense, it's the reason why it didn't work fully is because Drum was in the way of Ten Shin Han breaking the electric rice cooker. But now with Bulma there distracting Drum, Ten Shin Han can actually do his thing. But don't worry, this isn't as cut as dry as you think. The last child of Piccolo is swiftly defeated and the two combatants are relieved. However, Bulma is starting to sweat up a storm, and her suit is now overheating again massively, so she is comedically trying to get the suit off before she gets hurt. Ten Shin Han laughs out out of sheer catharsis. <laughs> I guess technology isn't all that it's cracked up to be then. <laughs> Bulma aims a snarky look at Ten Shin Han, and while these two are congratulating themselves some more, because I think, yeah, they deserve it, suddenly, piano arrives on the scene and is shouting up a storm about what just happened and vows revenge on the two, but is suddenly curb stomped by a Goku, now revived with ultra divine water and looking very, very determined for a fight. But Goku doesn't even notice that Piano's passing with one kick to the head even happened and is instead wondering where King Piccolo is right now. Where did he get to? Ken Shinon then tells Goku that he's safely locked away in this rice cooker and they were about to go and bury it somewhere. Nobody would ever stumble upon it and the world would be safe. Goku asks whether he can hold it for a sec and he then promptly smashes the rice cooker on the ground. Both Ten Shinhan and Bulma are aghast. What? What? The, what? What? Goku then says he won't rest easy unless this monster is destroyed properly especially after what happened with Krillin. And of course it's Goku, he wants a fight. Bulma suddenly feels extremely vulnerable right now. Despite her relatively high strength to a regular human, already just without the suit, there is no way that you know she can be usable right now. She quickly packs it all up and runs away, shouting back, I'll deal with you later, Goku, you idiot! Ten Shinhan has recovered a little bit and is ready to fight alongside Goku, but Goku tells him to get back and he will only ask for his help if needed. Ten Shin Han is puzzled, not to mention angry himself, at the young boy's actions, but acquiesces. They were so close to winning! King Piccolo returns from the cloud of the Mufaba technique and spots Goku in his battle stance ready to combat him. From here, the match plays out as it does in the original, with Goku ultimately getting the win after a tumultuous battle, and King Piccolo then spitting out the egg, which contains Piccolo Jr. As Ten Shin Han goes to Kame House to tell the rest of the gang and Goku recovers up at Korin's tower and then the lookout, Bulma is flying back to Capsule Corp in one of her planes located in a capsule that she had on her person at the time, which she would obviously have. You know, the one that she used to get to the tournament. She is fuming at Goku's stupidity and action and despite the fact that they were able to win and that there was no way Piccolo could come back now at all, it was still something so foolish that he really should have discussed with them first before just slamming that cooker on the ground. That being said though, with the day one, fortunately, Bulma has now got a lot of data to use in terms of upgrading her suit, and she then makes a detour to Kame House to pick up Yamcha because she feels less angry, and is there when the Dragon Balls are reset and they are able to revive those who had fallen to King Piccolo, including Krillin. Now in the three years that Goku spends training with Kami and Piccolo Jr is growing up as well, Bulma uses this time wisely and improves her physical strength as well as use the intel she got from the Piccolo fight to make her suit even better. And she will remember to put the suit on from the get go instead of putting it on in the ring when it comes to the next tournament. With all this training, Yamcha and Bulma grow closer and he benefits too by having a very good sparring partner as well as an awesomely strong romantic partner. Bulma's power without the suit grows to 100 and she has never felt better. Her suit now has multiple modes in terms of power output, which means that she now has better longevity at a lower power, but she can now crank it up to a huge maximum for concentrated bursts, but these can only be used 
three times in a session of use, so she has to use them wisely. You know, she can't just spam attack. What Bulma has now grasped is that stamina is just as important as power, if not more so. So she's learning! She's getting it, guys! So when we get to the 23rd tournament, Bulma arrives with a modified suit and decides to not wear her headpiece so as to ensure that she doesn't fall foul of the rules and gets disqualified. She doesn't need it for a tournament, you know, she thinks, and so she leaves it in the capsule. In said tournament, Bulma is able to make it to the quarterfinals, having ousted Chi Chi from the preliminaries. But don't worry, Chi Chi simply just accosted Goku after the said round, and they had a little sparring match of their own in private, whilst Ten Shin Han and Mercenary Tao fought. I feel that Chi Chi would still want to assess her future husband in the form of Goku, and so that little arc and that little narrative plotline isn't affected. Then we get to Bulma and Goku's quarterfinal matchup, and Bulma decides to go all out for this one. You know, she's got a point to prove. She whacks up her power to the highest sustainable power possible of 350, and is ready with those three surges when needed. Goku can't sense how strong Bulma's suit is, but he knows she is much stronger in her physical body than before, at least, so, you yeah, know, this should be fun. This match begins with the two of them fighting very equally. Goku noticing that Bulma has refined her techniques a little bit and has actually listened to his advice about understanding martial arts a little more, which, you know, is punctuated with Bulma demonstrating this with a wolf fang fist, much to Yamcha's pride as he watches from the sidelines. It catches Goku off guard and he almost falls out of the ring before leaping back up and he then starts to focus like Kami told him to. He has to think for a moment about reflecting on this, you know, he has to take this seriously. Goku then is able to turn the tables, but this is then met with a sudden powerful punch in the gut from Bulma's fist. Two surges to go. Goku can't believe that that attack came from Bulma. She then thinks that this should rattle the young man, but Goku is unfortunately not phased. In fact, he's fired up. He's proud that Bulma has come this far, but she is still no match for him thanks to Kami. She gets overly cocky though, and starts to get starry-eyed in thinking that she could beat Goku. I guess I didn't need more of my armor after all to beat you. <laughs> That's it. Goku's got an idea. Suddenly, she is met with a kick to the head. The one place that didn't have armor on it. Ouch. And with that, she is whacked out of the ring. Goku then laughs. <laughs> you probably should have not left your head wide open, Bulma. But wow, that suit packs a punch. Better luck next time, though. Bulma gets up and growls with indignation. She'll get that win one day! The rest of the tournament plays out like it did in the original, with Piccolo Jr. rearing up and fighting Goku in the same intensity like before. And despite Bulma really wanting to come in and help Goku, you know, she can, this is still technically a match within the tournament, and any outside help, any at all, is not permitted at the risk of disqualifying Goku. Bulma puts her helmet on for real this time and is ready to intervene if her friend's life is in danger. When the counter strikes 10 and Piccolo is technically meant to be defeated, he keeps going against the rules. Goku is left battered by this and Piccolo is reveling in avenging his father. For a moment, that is. He is then slammed by a flying Bulma going at the speed of sound, using her second surge to do so. And she then sends him flying upwards and uses her last surge to aim a full power wolf fang fist in his direction, which is enough to fell the demon sun. Not vaporize, but he's out for the count. The rest of the arc plays out as per normal, with Goku ultimately sparing Piccolo despite Bulma's assistance, much to her annoyance, that he has acted so foolish again herself counting her lucky stars that the fight ended when it did. Chi Chi and Goku get married of course, Bulma goes off to perfect her suit some more after gaining some press coverage and interest in her technology, she could probably sell it, and the rest of the team go about their business for the next five years of peacetime on earth. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you guys think? Do you feel that this scenario played out fairly given the power of Bulma's suit? What else would you implement into her armor and schematics to make her even more useful whilst also not being too overpowered and hacked? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!